What's going on, everybody? I am back to break down this four-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Excited to get into the breakdown. Not exactly the biggest slate in the world, so going to be kind of straight to the point here, but with all these crazy slates that we've had going on, maybe that'll be a nice switch of pace. It should be pretty easy to be tracking these injuries on uh, only a four-gamer. Even though it's only a four-gamer, it could still get crazy with everything that's going on, but we're going to be on top of it, finding the edge, giving you guys the top plays on this slate tonight to win you some money. Don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my lock of the night. And don't forget about all the fun stuff we have linked below in the description box of this channel. Sponsor the channel, Parlay Play. Sign up today using that promo code KJK0003. I'm sorry, 003, not 0003. And uh, you will get an instant match deposit up to $50. You also get a risk-free $10 to play today. The KJK DFS Bankroll Challenge, we have gotten all the way up to $534.85 from $10. I will be giving those picks on the live stream uh, tonight, every live stream going forward. So tune into the live stream for some more picks. And uh, we did take, I got to update this. We did take some losses last night. We got a little crazy with the four picks. I'm getting a little bit aggressive because our bankroll's gotten so large that we can be, you know, a little bit more on the, uh, the risky side. And we did take three losses uh, last night, unfortunately. So I will be updating that for the live stream. So that ticked us down $75. Um, so, you know, got to roll with the punches. Um, three losses, unfortunately. We, Kyle Lowry got ejected. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets game turned into a blowout. And Fred Van Vliet missed the line by about two points for me in my picks last night. So, um, you know, it is what it is. We're still way up and we're going to bounce back on that one. So sign up today using the Parlay Play. You can also sign up for my premium content down below in the description. KJK slash... Patreon.com slash KJK underscore DFS is what I'm trying to say here. Um, premium NBA projections, NBA data sheet, player stats, team stats, play contact stats, core plays. Check it out. Let's get into the breakdown, guys. As always, we're going to go game by game here. Boston taking on the New York Knicks first game on the slate. Derek Rose out. Kemba Walker continues to be out. Peyton Pritchard listed as out. Other than that, this, this game overall doesn't exactly have the most amount of injury news, especially with what's been going on as of late. Um, I mean, this is just... A really straightforward game. Everyone's healthy, which is almost unheard of. So it's a 209.5 over-under with a 1.5 point spread in favor of the Boston Celtics. Not exactly the fastest up pace game, but on a slate where we have some pretty large spreads, it is a game that's expected to stay close. So I guess that's step one here. Um, with there being no Peyton Pritchard, the fir Pritchard, I should say, the first thing that I will say that stands out is I do think that Dennis Schroeder is going to get a lot more usage off the bench. He should get a lot more minutes as well. And I do think he's going to be a much better play um, with there being no... Peyton Pritchard. So he's the first guy that I'd be looking to on the Boston side of things from an upside at his price tag aspect. As far as anyone else on this Boston squad, on the Knicks squad, squad RJ Barrett at 6K really standing out to me. Now, there, he has got an increase in usage with there being no uh, Julius Randle for a few of these games. But last time Julius Randle returned, he still played 42 minutes, 48 and a half DraftKings points, had a fantastic game. At this 6K price tag, does grade out as a pretty uh, respectable play for me on this slate today. The payup options in Jason Tatum, uh, Jalen Brown. I'm a little bit skeptical to go all the way up to Jason Tatum when Jalen Brown's in. These guys cut into each other's usage a lot. I sound like a broken record. If you've been watching my content since last season, you've heard me say this many times, but it's the truth. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, when they're both in, supply about the same upside. On DraftKings, oftentimes, Jalen Brown is priced at an extreme discount in comparison to Jason Tatum. For that reason, I will just play Jalen Brown every single time, take the discount, and fade Jason Tatum. That's just how my brain works, especially in a game where it's only a 209.5 over under. Take the price tag discount. If these guys go out there and both put up 50, you're going to be a lot happier with Jalen Brown's 50 at 9K than you are with Jason Tatum's 50 at 10-2. So that's going to be my approach there. Julius Randle at 10K on DraftKings came back last game, put up 59 DraftKings points. He will continue to be the main usage guy on this Knicks squad. And he did get a nice price tag decrease down to 10K from 10-7. So another payup option on this slate tonight if we do find the salary. Robert Williams and Al Horford both being healthy now. They're going to cut into each other's usage. I would recommend that you only play one of these guys in your lineups. They are negatively correlated. When one guy grabs a rebound, the other guy can't, obviously. When one guy scores, the other guy can't. On a putback, you get the point. So that'd be my approach there. And then you have Alec Burks and Evan Fournay, who do get a slight bump up with there being no Kemba Walker and no Derrick Rose. If you want to go there, um, not my top plays on the slate, but just some food for thought on this small gamer. I want to give you guys the top plays on each team. Detroit taking on Memphis. Next game on the slate as far as a total in this one. This game right now comes in with a 220 uh, over under with a 12.5 point spread in favor of the Memphis Grizzlies. So Memphis expected to win this game. 
very easily. We saw Detroit get absolutely blown out last night by Charlotte on the bright side. Maybe that will make their legs a little bit more rested up tonight after they got pulled early last night. Sadiq Bey only played 27 minutes. Um, Hamadou Diallo played 24 minutes. And Cade Cunningham played 26 minutes. So typically these guys are all going to see in the mid-30s. Memphis is a defense that does not scare me. Those three guys are going to continue to be the highest up in usage. I will continue to say I do think that Hamadou Diallo takes the biggest hit with Cade Cunningham returning. So my two favorite plays are going to be Cade Cunningham and Sadiq Bey. With Jeremiah Grant continuing to be out, no Kelly Olenek. You could also be taking a hard look to a um, Trey Lyles, if there is no Isaiah Store as well. Um, he's been starting at the center position. Great play at a 5K price tag if these guys continue to be out. Keep your eyes on this injury news. We have a lot of it um, coming up. Isaiah Store, we have Frank Jackson, DeAnthony Mountain, Kyle Anderson, uh, Dylan Brooks, Desmond Bain. Desmond Bain is expected to be uh, doubtful in this game, so expect him to be out. I mean, if Dylan Brooks and DeAnthony Mountain can return that's obviously they're going to step right in and take on that role if they're still out and all these guys are out John Morant already a great play with there being no Desmond Bain because he's going to get a big bump up in usage but if those guys get ruled out as well uh John Morant's going to be an absolute smash play so once again some more injury news to keep your eyes on and uh, you could also go to a Steven Adams or Jaron Jackson Jr. in this lower price range uh both of which are a little bit risky uh both of which have high upside but they are risky. So that would be my, you know, advice there. You can go there. A little bit risky. Golden State Warriors taking on the New Orleans Pelicans. The next game on the slate, Stephen Curry is uh, listed as questionable now. So this is obviously a huge piece of news. If Stephen Curry is out, he consumes so much usage. That would be a big bump up to A, Andrew Wiggins, A, Jordan Poole, A, Gary Payton. Most notably, Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins, though. Jordan Poole, specifically, would become point guard Jordan Poole. He would be a phenomenal play. The New Orleans Pelicans defense is terrible. This game comes with a 216 and a half over under. Um, I'm going to have interest in targeting these Warriors for sure, especially if there's no Stephen Curry. Um, and like I said, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole would both take a big bump up here. They would both be top peak interests of mine. Otto Porter Jr. was ruled out on the front end of the back-to-back. -back. Expect him to be back in this one as well. He'd become a pretty intriguing play if there's no Stephen Curry. Would get a nice bump up. Um, Iguodala was ruled out on the first end, uh, first half of the back-to-back -back as well. Expect him to be back after putting up 33 DraftKings points in that last game. That was a bit of a uh, an outlier, but if there's no Steph Curry, I guess you could make an argument to take a dart play on him. And the last guy you'd be looking to would be a Damian Lee. Damian Lee priced at set the three five on DraftKings. If you want to go there, certainly does make quite a bit of sense to me. And um, yeah, that would be my approach in this game. Running it back on the other side, Jonas Valanciunas, Brandon Ingram are going to be the top two uh, options, obviously, on the New Orleans Pelicans side. They're priced up for good reason. They've been, Brandon Ingram's been a little bit underwhelming but as of late, but his price tag just take a major dip down all the way from 9.6 to 8.1. So if there was ever a time to play Brandon Ingram, this would be it. Um, I mean, his sore Achilles, he's bouncing back from. It's kept him out a couple games. He's been back two games, though. Um, he slowly increased his minutes workload, and he just had a day off. I feel like he's starting to trend in the right direction here, and the price tag is what's really intriguing to me. We have not been able to play this guy outside of the 9K range for quite some time now. Um, so that's really exciting to me. Jonas Valanciunas at A8 has also seen his price tag come down a little bit. So, uh, you know, both those guys certainly standing out to me uh, at their particular price tags. We've also seen Josh Hart. He was priced up to 6'6". Now he's down to 6'4". His price tags come down. So these guys are all um, getting lots of minutes, lots of production. And if Stephen Curry's out, the game's expected to stay even closer. And I surprisingly think I'm going to have a lot of interest in these um, New Orleans Pelicans pieces, especially considering the Golden State Warriors are the number one defense in the league. You would tend to think I wouldn't be too, too interested here. But on a four-game slate, I do think that these pieces uh, stand out to me quite a bit. It's a game that's expected to stay close. It's a decent pace. Um, these guys are getting lots of minutes. Everything kind of checks the boxes for me to be getting some exposure to these guys. Lastly, you could play an Herb jo uh, Herbert Jones. He's been getting a lot of minutes as well. Mid-30s at a 4-5 price tag. He can easily surpass this price tag on any given night. He's a bit of an average fantasy point producer. So, you know, typically he grades out in the upper 20s for me in my projection model. And that's what he's been producing. But we've seen him put up 37, 46, and 4. It is possible to have an outlier game. So Herbert Jones, another guy you can look to. Lastly, Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Um, his minutes just really haven't been there. His fantasy point production grades out really good in projection models. He just, 
he hasn't been able to get there. So that one's a little bit sketchy for me. That's a, you know, an extreme tournament play, once again. Next game. LA Clippers taking on the Phoenix Suns. DeAndre Ayton's listed as out. Um, JaVale McGee is listed as out. We saw Mr. Jalen Smith have to leave the game last time. He did return. Um, didn't exactly have the best game, though, and only played 16 minutes in that one. Bismack Biombo came in and just absolutely dominated. So Bismack Biombo had a 4K price tag, 29 minutes last amount, 38 DraftKings points. Might be someone that's actually an intriguing play on this slate tonight. Especially considering, excuse me, especially considering when you look at the Vegas Lions, it is an 11-point spread in favor of Phoenix. So if this game turns into a blowout for some reason, Bismack probably gets that blowout run. Um, so I do think that's pretty intriguing. On the Clippers side, if this game's going to stay close, they are pretty short-handed. They're dealing without Paul George. They're dealing without Ivica Zubak. They're dealing without Luke Kennard. Nicholas Patoon's listed as questionable. So if this game is going to stay close, it's pretty obvious who's going to be going off in this game. It's going to be Reggie Jackson, Eric Bledsoe, Terrence Mann, Marcus Morris. Those main four candidates are really who you're looking to on this Clippers side. And like I said, if the game stays close, all these guys are priced reasonably too. So this is a game on a four-game slate. I think you could stack up. Uh, Reggie Jackson, Eric Bledsoe, Marcus Morris. Like I said, all going to see lots of minutes. All priced very reasonably in the mid-5K range to upper 5K range. Um, and if the game stays close, we know it's going to be them performing. So I think this is a game where on a four-game slate, you probably stack it up, get a lot of exposure uh, to these pieces, expecting the game to stay close, or you say it's a blowout and you fade everything. Um, so that's a pretty simple strategy. Uh, if you're building multiple lineups, if you're building one, you're going to have to kind of decide which side of the fence you're on and go from there. We've seen Serge Ibaka play right around 20 minutes. It's going to be a no for me, only playing 20 minutes with a 4-4 price tag. Um, Amir Coffee at 4-3 has been getting a lot more run, right around 30 minutes a game. If you'd like to go to him, I don't hate it. Um, so yeah, guys, that's my overall breakdown on DraftKings. Let's take a quick look over to FanDuel before I give you guys my lock of the night. Talk about some pricing discrepancies. Talk about some, some of my top plays right now that are grading out as good plays for me in my projections. Keep in mind, this is a first look. My projections aren't up to date. Um, we didn't really touch on the other side. The one thing I would say also is Chris Paul continues to be way too cheap on the Phoenix side on both websites. He was my lock of the night last time because of his price tag. His price tag is still cheap. He's taken on his former team in the LA Clippers. You get a bit of a revenge narrative. He's only 7-3 on DraftKings, and he's only 7-8 on FanDuel. He grades out as a really good play for me. So I will continue to get some Chris Paul exposure. Expected to play in the mid-30s. He was my lock of the night last time. Had a very average game from a fantasy aspect. He went out there and dropped 15 assists. He had 11 points. It's just that game kind of got away, and he didn't get the full run. And then it just... Well, he did get the full run, actually. That wasn't even the case. He just... He played decent. Just not exactly that next tier level that we were hoping for for the lock of the night. But regardless... Still had a decent performance. Wouldn't have killed you if you played him. Definitely wouldn't have made you come to first, most likely. But you get the point. And I think that he has the upside to really surpass this. He's putting up 1.19 Fandle points per minute on the season. That is phenomenal. At a 7-8 price tag, I'll take that all day. So I do like him. Devin Booker also grades out as a great play over here at 8-8. Putting up 1.18 Fandle points per minute. These, these guys both just, you know, really dominating the usage in this offense. Both really standing out as good plays. And they just need the game to stay close. And if it does... They're both going to be good plays on this slate tonight. We talked about the Clippers side of things. We talked about Dennis Schroeder at 5-3 on Fandle. He really stands out with there being no Peyton Pritchard. Um, he's going to get an even bigger bump up in his usage when he comes off the bench. And at 5-3 on Fandle specifically, really grades out as a good play there. Too cheap. So he's certainly making a lot of sense to me. Reggie Jackson, Jordan Poole, both priced at 5-7 and over here. I do think make a lot of sense as well. We talked about the Clippers side being shorthanded. Uh, Jordan Poole, especially if there is no... Uh, Stephen Curry, like I mentioned. Regardless, I still like him, but if there's no Stephen Curry, he just becomes an absolute lock. Would love the play. Um, so we're waiting on that news. But if indeed there is no Stephen Curry, he's going to be one of my top plays on the slate. So certainly keep that in mind. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas over here on FanDuel gets a nice price tag uh, discount as well at 7.9 price tag. That is too cheap for Mr. JV. So I do like him quite a bit. Uh, his price tag at 7.9. Um, going to be a great play on FanDuel once again. So, yeah, these are some guys. Julius Randle, another guy, priced at a discount on Fandle. He's only 9K over here. I mean, that's pretty... They're making it pretty easy on you to want to lock in some Julius Randle at only a 9K price tag. Over on DraftKings, where he's 10K, you got to think about it a little bit. 9K, kind of easy to be locking that in. So, uh, Brandon Ingram, once again, has seen his price tag fall to an extreme measure over here on Fandle. He's now 7'9". I think that's a price tag that we should be taking advantage of. Uh, while we can, he's going to see his minutes continue to increase. He's going to see his usage continue to increase coming off that Achilles injury. He's just kind of getting back into the swing of things. 
I think this is the game you might want to jump on that price tag. Andrew Wiggins at 7-2 grades out as a great play for me. If there's no Stephen Curry, he grades out as an even better play. Same can be said for Draymond Green. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot over here, but you know, it's a four-gamer slate. And the last I would say is Eric Bledsoe um, at this 5-4 price tag. Once again, grades out as a pretty great play for me on the Clippers side of things. If this game stays close, they're going to need him. My favorite narrative, Mr. Eric Bledsoe. I don't want to be here. Phoenix Suns, lock it in tonight, baby. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But anyways, that is my overall breakdown, guys. Before I let you go, of course, I got to give you my lock of the night. Let's get into it. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be Reggie Jackson. Taking on this Phoenix Sun squad in an up-tempo game here with a 220 and a half over under. Still no Paul George. This Clippers team dealing with multiple injuries. No Luke Kennard. His usage should soar through the roof and already a good fantasy point producer as is. Not to mention the price tag looking very friendly on both websites. Only 5-7 on FanDuel, only 6-1 on DraftKings. Putting up 0.91 DraftKings points per minute on the season. Expected to play in the mid-30s. And as far as FanDuel, 0.85 FanDuel points per minute on the season. Love this spot. Love the price tag. Get him in your lineups because he is my lock of the night. So there we go, guys. Reggie Jackson. Get him in your lineups. Clippers dealing with some injuries. Point guard usage expected to play in the mid-30s minutes. If the game's going to stay close, it's going to go through him. And even if it doesn't, at his price tag. His price tag is just too cheap across the industry. So love the Reggie Jackson play. Get him in your lineups, guys. If you're interested in signing up for some premium content, check out the premium content. Check out Parlay Play. Use that promo code KJK003. Link below in the description. Also follow me over on Twitter at KJK underscore DFS where I tweet out updates, picks, promotions, um, anything and everything. Also have a little bit of fun over there. Send out some funny gifts, all that fun stuff. And, uh, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Really do appreciate the support. Hopefully, I'll see you tonight on the live stream. Wish you all the best of luck, and we will see you in the next one.